So we're bringing y'all in the middle of this conversation that we've been having um, for for some time, and if it's speeding for more than you look fine, babe. <laughs> It's expedient for, you know, for all of us. Like, and it's like, it's a conversation that, um, I don't know why we shy away from it so much. I don't know why we get shy. Because people don't know what they're talking about. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's taboo and it's things that we already have some sort of, feel some type of way about. Yeah. So it's just like. Why would you want to talk about something that you already have some sort of aversion to, it seems like? Yeah. I just feel as though if we would have talked about this a lot more, like, even, like, now, y'all coming in the middle, we're going we gonna to be using, like, code words because, you know, we got little ears. And we have a, a mockingbird. And we got a mockingbird. Like, she's going to say what she hear. Um... But it, but it has to be talked about. So we, we're talking about it, um, you know, in, in like, manner, but... So like certain things we might like code like the S word we we going you know you know you know relations or intimacy, um, but then there's other yeah y'all y'all catching on it's just like but I feel like if somebody would have told or mentioned it to me before about like stuff like you know pornography and you know information like stuff like that right. Like it would the M word. The M word, the P word, you know, the big P, the big M. I feel as though, not even feel, like yeah, it so would have it would have gotten given a lot more clarity and a lot more um I would have been prepared. You know what I'm saying? I would have been prepared throughout the thing. Like like I, my struggle I had a struggle, and again, y'all coming in the middle of the conversation. So if y'all have questions, drop it down in the chat and we'll answer it as best we can. But um like I, I struggled with learning, you know, in middle school. And literally, I was done, you know, with that really in high school. But then high school, it took on a different type of, you know, situation. But, and of course, mine stemmed from sexual trauma, you know, mm -hmm. sexual abuse and all that stuff. But it's more of the restoration situation that lingered, lingered mm -hmm. and lingered big time. And it lingered big time, one, because... No one wants to talk about right? Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to really teach on it, you know. And and of course, people start talking about it and they talk about you know the scripture with uh, Omen in Genesis. So that ain't got nothing to do with murder. Mm. You know that has to do with complete disobedience to to God's word. You know he told uh, he told Onan, you know to you know make sure your your sister what have you has a. You know, has a, has a son, and he decided not to do that and to spill, you know, his seed on the ground, and people automatically say, so God, you know, that's that's against, you know, restoration, rather than teaching the, the fullness and the truth of right. what is actually happening. But even in that scripture, if someone would have told me that, you know, you know, that the M is, it deals a lot more with brokenness. It deals more, even self-gratification, right? That is the error in the situation. And people are not going to like this, right? But your body expelling itself, there, even when you look in the Old Testament, there's a whole law concerning your body naturally expelling itself, right? So like what men call, you know, for men is, you know, uh, ejaculation in the sleep or wet dreams. I don't know what it's called for women, you know, but... Yeah, but like in y'all sleep, I don't. Oh, I don't yeah, y'all don't have that situation, right? <laughs> but but even with you know, I'm, I'm in with women she's cycle. Me make bread, guys. She's helping to make uh, hollow bread, but you know, women on their cycle, men, you know, uh, uh, you know, exactly during the day and the sleep, yeah. what have you. The Bible already has, I'm in. Yeah, amen. Like instructions on how a man's supposed to go. If if a man does that. In the morning of the day, he's unclean until the end of the day, mm. right? Or, you know, he has to wash himself and he can't touch and all that stuff. He's unclean until the end of the day. You know, so, and people don't like this, your body naturally does that mm -hmm. by itself. Mm -hmm. Your body naturally needs to release that stuff by itself. The sin comes when you're gratifying yourself. You're indulging you're in your... Intentionally. Yeah, yeah, you're intentionally, but not even intentionally in the sense of deep. <laughs> the intention of what you're doing right because 
you're intentionally, you know, you, you, you need a sample for a, you I, know, doctors, you know. So this is the thing, kids, with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, give it to me. Medical thing. Oh, oh, oh. But I, what? She got flour on the, on the apple. Uh-huh. She's in her room. <laughs> I know, but she can't do that, so. She'll be fine. Go ahead. Um, I think that the bigger, before we go into the details, when it comes to that, even in you saying that, it's this idea that the woman's job is to fulfill that, that's it. Does that make sense? So it's like, if y'all have a problem, guys have a problem, and you're going through, oh, you need to marry somebody. The solution is, oh, you need to marry that girl. Why she got you all turned out like that? Mm -hmm. Instead of addressing, well, one, I can't be the solution to that problem. First of all, we are not supposed to be the solution to each other's problems. We are supposed to be the aid in finding the solution to the problem. Oh, that's different for you. That's a marriage. <laughs> it's not my job to fix every problem that you have. What my job is to do is to one, pray for you, that's an aid, to make it a little bit easier for you to not have that problem recur or come back mm -hmm. or to whatever, is we are aids. Help, helping is not doing things for you. It's doing things that benefit what the need is. Yeah. So I think that's where, um, when it comes to being believers, how that problem starts because it's such a misogynistic ideology to begin with where someone will say and they will twist the bible to make it seem like the only solution is for you to have a wife and for you to project the things that are already wrong with you onto that person well, you're already having a problem with less. keeping yourself exactly yeah. Yeah. you're already having a problem with with perversion Mm -hmm. But instead of you going to God and saying, what is it that, what is in me? Like, take that out of me. How do I continue to daily practice this change? Mm -hmm. You say, well, just get a wife. Because then it's another, they, it, it allows it to be another cover mm -hmm. for what's already there. And, and it never left. Yeah. And, it never left. And they, in the scripture that you, you mentioned, the scripture that you're talking about is in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Where it says, verse 9, but if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it's better to marry than to burn. But that scripture is, that, that's not talking about lust. Like, that's that high, that's that, that scripture is not, it's not talking about lust. It's talking about an affection, a mutual, because it says they. Mm -hmm. that, that's one. If they can't contain, mm -hmm. if they're already in, in, in a mutual understanding co covenant, but I speak this by verse 6, says, but I speak, first of all, you really have to start at verse 1. Y'all know me. Like, I don't know verse one. Now concerning things wherever you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. That's where he starts. Mm -hmm. That's where he starts. And I don't know how we skip over that, but he starts addressing lust. Mm -hmm. It is not good for you to be touching on a woman. Mm -hmm. And line upon line, precept upon precept, it's not good for a man to be alone. We know the, con the consideration on that. We know that he's talking about men and help meet women and help meet working together on that wise. Um, men, you know, not container or women, and even in essence being, you know, brought up in adultery and what have you, fornication. Mm -hmm. But he starts this particular conversation with, it's not good for a man to touch a woman. You already should not be in a place of lust. Yeah. That's the, that's the part that never gets addressed. You already have to deal with the fact that something in you ain't right. But that's ownership. And that's it is, and it's accountability. But did Jesus not do the same thing? Jesus said, "Well, if you're if you look at a woman to lust after her, then that's you got a problem, right? Then you've already committed adultery. Right. So by the time we get to masturbation, murder, um, sorry, Aubrey. <laughs> by the time we get there, we've already skipped Let's say M. M. By the time we get to M, you've already." Skip through brokenness, lust, addiction, right. <laughs> you know, all manner of layers that have brought you to this place. It's not like, it's not like you have never been introduced to those things and your body's doing the regular release or what have you in some situation going like that. You know what I'm saying? You already have this 
back precedent of stuff that is bringing you to this place where you say, let me go watch this, that, or the third, or for those who don't watch stuff, because that was me for a time, I didn't have to watch stuff, you know, for a while. But in my mind, I'm still doing it to the thought of a person, something that might have happened in the past, something that I hope happens in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm still doing what Jesus said don't do, which is looking after somebody to lust after them, right? So that's where the error versus you, I got a release or, you know, somebody need a sample or, you know, the doctor, what have mm -hmm. you. Like, and that's what I don't think people understand. Just like sex, it's not the action alone that is sin. That's, that's, and that's dangerous to say because we can, we, people try to twist that and make that for other stuff. It's not for everything. If you, if, you know, but there are instances where, and this is, might be a, a hard left turn, and we were talking about this, it's like killing, right? Mm -hmm. Bible said there's a time to kill, you know, and stuff like that. There's time for war, time for peace. So then war or killing is not inherently by itself the evil. Mm -hmm. The evil is in the intention and the why for it, right? And we're going to go somewhere where we ain't going to have to kill nobody because that's the nature of our, you know, that's going to be the nature of where God has taken us. The natures of our bodies right now, there has to be, you know, people using the bathroom, you got to do that. Your body's going to naturally get rid of, you know, uh, what's in the man, semen, and whatnot because of our bodies, because of the natural use of our body. That's going to all go away. So you can't play that card of, well, then this can't be evil. This, you can't play that card. The world is evil. Like, right. like sin is in the world. So that you can't play that. The conversation comes to really the intent of a man's heart, which is what Jesus is always dealing with, is what's in your heart. He starts off with your heart. It's good for a man not to touch a woman. That's what's in the heart. It's good for you to have self-freaking control. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own, what's the word? Wife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let every woman have her own husband. It's interesting how he goes straight to the relationship and the, the relationship that has to be present in order for the action to be right. possible. Right, because then that takes away this thing where it's like the, you, you've you projected that on, it could have been anybody. It could have been anybody, right. But now you fit in to marry this person. Mm -hmm. But then that goes to the, the, the content of marriage nowadays. So that's why when counseling comes in, to be honest. You're right. Or, You're right. Or lack thereof. You're right. <laughs> That's why some people don't go to counselors because then it addresses the thing of, oh, well, it could have been Susie it could, you down the road. Right. Susie could have been your wife. Right. You know, it didn't uh, matter. Larry could have been, you know, it, it didn't matter who. Exactly. You were just horny. You were just trying to fulfill a need. Yeah. Rather yeah. than this is the person you are going to be in no, eternal just, covenant no, with. This is my night. You know, before yes. God, you know, and, you know, it gives it us later on the, the grounds for, you know, divorce and all that stuff in the later chapters. But you have to address the heart before you can get to the action of sex. You have to. And that, I think that's the hard part sometimes when yeah. people, again, in church, because even growing up, like, I didn't have a very <laughs> insightful person to these conversations. Yeah. Not because my mom was any less than, but I think that she already had this aversion because of her past experiences, my siblings. like So by the time I feel like it got to me, it was like, don't do that. <laughs> got married. Go have babies. <laughs> Instead of it, and, and and church is hard because right if if, if but that that's the accountability portion when it comes to the body of Christ anyway that we lack. Yeah. Is this well the church should be everything that we need right? Yeah. The answer should be found in the house of the Lord, but mm -hmm. they're not. You should because, be able to talk about sex and all yeah, that. Yeah. But in the house of the Lord. But. There's so much other things going on and other individual understandings to where no one. You want those ones? Yeah. I'm trying to take all the apples from my apple collar bread. I got some in here though. Um, you take away, you don't know. Is it the people don't know or they already went about it the wrong way? Mm -hmm. They in a marriage for 50,000 years and it just the start of their marriage was because of their lust. So. That was never addressed, but they still stand. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. They figured it <laughs> but, out along the way, which yeah. happens. That happens. Yeah, yes, but I'm saying at the same time, some people don't figure it out along the way. Yeah, and so it destroys they, them. So they don't have the grounds to teach anybody. And I think that's what you just said is powerful, the figuring out. Because I can say, and what we were talking about transparently was when Bria 
you know, first had Aubrey, and this is where's where we really turn the corner in this conversation, because I thank thank God for uh, Apostle Holmes <laughs> and Mama. Like thank God, thank God that I can have this conversation with him. When Bria, you know, um, was was uh, recovering after having Aubrey, as all women have to do. Man, that's six weeks of no sex, y'all. And a you know what I'm saying? Business. And a little bit more if there's a traumatic right. moment that has happened. And it's not, and trauma is not Same always sex, something. Like 10 weeks. Yeah, and it's, and it, but it's beyond physical. There's traumatic right, yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah, happens in the mind of, I don't want my private part to be used for anything right now. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And as the husband, if your mind is not good, and if your mind is not conditioned correctly, if you have not, I'm going to say it plainly. If you have not dealt with lust and perversion in your mind, you're going to try to come straight to the Bible and talk about she's defrauding me. Mm -hmm. I've turned the corner here because I did this. Yeah. I, I can testify. I did it. Yeah. I would. That's as, as, as soon. That's right where my mind went is, well, Rhea, you, you might be defrauding me. You might be defrauding me. Mm -hmm. Thank God for a godly counsel to say, well, is it affection that you're looking for? Because there's some sex ain't the only way to be affectionate. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Apostle Owens. <laughs> like, 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 sex ain't the only way to be affectionate. Yeah. Like, what do you really want? And my thing was, I don't feel like I'm receiving affection. Okay, well, that's a whole other conversation. Which opened the conversation for her and I to talk about what is affection to me. Right. Which made me have to be reflective of, so sex is affection to you? Now, you know that's a lie. Because mm -hmm. the way you were introduced to sex wasn't through affection. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's that's just for me, my personal testimony. I wasn't introduced to sex through affection. I was introduced to sex through uh, abuse, mm -hmm. like through inappropriateness. Right. So my lens of affection already is rooted in inappropriateness. And I think nobody wants to talk about that, but. And I think for me, it was because of the tra that traumatic situation, and also because of the lack of affection that I had. I didn't crave. You didn't some, even I crave didn't crave it. Yeah, your level of affection has rubbed me. Exactly. It was, it <laughs> because was I'm not, in pain. I wasn't associated with that because I I could identify from, again, that birthing trauma and mm -hmm. from relationship trauma that someone cannot be affectionate to you, have no okay. love for you, and, and still do be that. doing it. Yeah. So for me, it was just like, you know, and again, we had to come to that understanding together in love and arguments and everything else, but yes, still in but love. Still love. <laughs> to say, okay, well, ours differed a little bit. How can we come to a common ground where both of us get the things that we need and actually, you know, still love one another? Yeah. You know, that part will come back. But what are we able to do and accomplish in the meantime that will strengthen our relationship? Because mm -hmm. we plan on having more children, right? Yeah. So we have to get this together now. Because there was no way, I, I, I know for a fact, there's no way for us to get to a point now where we're expecting our second baby Yay. with me not reassured to know that I'm going to be <laughs> child. Machine. You ain't doing it, yeah. <laughs> Machine. You ain't doing it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Such and such and such and such. Again, I, I, unless we figured that out, you know. So they're eating all of my. Scraps. Sorry, I, apples is my favorite fruit. So. <laughs> Here, if you want, to do that. um. So I think I think it, it is multi layered, and I think a lot of time, and, and that's the danger of not marrying and communicating uh -oh. mm -hmm. and being in the, on the same page about things because what will happen is either someone will just go along with it because you know they think that that's what they're supposed to do and they don't feel good about it mm -hmm. and you know and and this is i had i was watching a video a few weeks ago about someone saying is it possible to rape your or your sorry, wife our words is it possible to our word yours mm -hmm. um you wife or husband that's exactly um wife or husband uh is it possible to do that mm -hmm. and a lot of people were saying, no, how do you do that, that yard? And then you're supposed to give it up at this and that. And then other people were like, well, yeah, if you guys aren't communicating that this is something that can't be done right now. Mm -hmm. or is it making somebody feel good right now? And, you know, I, but I think that's the hard part in, in, yeah, that's hard. in the body of Christ, too. That's hard. And, and that's why a lot of these things happen, because nobody's communicating anything. Yeah. Women and men. 
Yeah. We talk about we will talk about getting into relationships till we are blue in the face yeah. in Christ. Like I can't tell you how many times I have seen a a whole conference based around relationships. relationships. Ain't nobody talking about sex. But no one's talking <laughs> about once you get in the relationship. Yeah. The thing, the standards for getting into the relationship is just. You know, wait on the Lord, he'll send you. Okay, but once you send somebody, and maybe they have a very skewed understanding of this, that, and the third, that you can't identify until you guys are actually married, because mm-hmm. that's when you're actually supposed to be doing all that type of stuff. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. So, you can't, you can't address it until you guys are actually in it. And now you're looking at him like, oh, this guy's kind of crazy. Yeah. Or this girl trying to... Do me trying to do sleep. me while I'm asleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, just, it's, a viol- it's, it's a it's a violation. Yeah. Because then what happens, what happens, and this is where, like, this is where that scenario lives, because people, people, yeah. people don't really understand the scriptures. What happens yeah. when, as the scriptures say, okay. y'all not doing it, okay. praise him, and I don't mean to use that colloquially, I'm using it because, you know, baby girl here, and protect the ears, but y'all are doing things, um, being intimate, yeah. and you do agree we ain't fitting to be intimate because we fasting. Mm-hmm. But I'm horny tomorrow night. But we agree that we're not doing nothing because we fasting. So what I just I cancel the fast. Mm-hmm. But and, and and I don't and we don't think like this, but do you see the the evil of that in itself? You are going to lift up your flesh over consecration. Right. Because you're age. That but that's the type of stuff that happens all the time. It happened all the time. Well, I mean, we fasted for one day. We fasted this, that, 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 that. That was enough time. That was enough time. No, we agreed to consecrate. We agreed to consecrate. This, that's why I wrote the Manual of Saints and he talking about what the church won't talk about. Yeah, because, like, like, it's simple. But And, and again, I'll say this, and I don't mind exposing myself because I confess and the Lord done fixed my heart and we praise God. I love him. I when when she went through what she went through for the birth of Aubrey, going her uh, on Life of the Spire, she, we talk about it, mm-hmm. right? And in the podcast, we talk about what she act, what actually happened when she was given birth. Um, in the six weeks, I was like, all right, it's gonna be six weeks. I'm gonna be all right, right? Mm-hmm. I went years without having sex. Right. You know, I I, I was celibate that for was years. <laughs> that was his thought process. That was my thought process. Was I was celibate for years? You know, mm-hmm. all through high school, like I. I was fine. Now, was I promiscuous in high school? Yeah. Did I do some crazy stuff? Yeah. Did I do something? I shouldn't? Yeah. But the the bop bop doom, I wasn't boom bop damn it and slap bop the boo. You know. And so I had a history of celibacy. Right. Yeah, but you know when you're laying next to my Shande, you know when you high your glory, right, Joanne. Praise him. When you're doing yes, God. When you're laying next, and it's six weeks. It's like, yeah, she's yeah, in pain, time okay. Runs. The time starts to run into it. it. Time just starts to run, in, you know. And I'm looking crazy in the face because I never dealt with my lust. Yeah. People don't talk like this. I never dealt with my perversion. So now I'm getting all images in my head and things and stuff is coming back. And I'm, you know, the M word here and the M word there. And having now to go through relapse. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, God, what's going on? Well, what's going on is you never dealt with why you aimed at the first place. Right. You were doing that because you were, and I won't even say mine was self-gratification as much as mine was trying to figure out what it should feel like. Mm-hmm. And, and I can say that, you know, I, I was trying to figure out, well, it was done to me incorrectly. What is it supposed to feel right. like? Right. You know, and then it got to the place was this feel good. But then it got to a place where it didn't feel good anymore. Right. I, and I even tell them, you know, I've said this to my wife, I don't like touching myself. I don't. Yeah. When I'm in the shower washing up, it's like, oh my God. You know, it's like, huh. Like, I don't like but touching I, I myself. I think that that comes back to the fact that people think that it's, mar- not even people think that. People mm-hmm. are taught that marriage is a solution to things. And it's not. Get out of my bowl. I'm sorry. <laughs> apples. Yeah, just take the scraps or get, or get another apple. Um... It's a solution to things. So if I... Mm. Aubrey girl. Her other apple. Say apple. Hair. Um, Good. They think it's a solution to this stuff. And it's not. It's literally like... It'll, it puts a magnifying glass on everything. Mm-hmm. That's the bigger thing. So then when people are like... I'm just going to get married because I love this girl. You love this girl. Do you? You really? You know she's crazy, right? (laughs) (laughs) 
and you know that you know and, and, and this is a hard part for me i think when it comes I, I don't think anybody told me how ch childbirth was going to go and, and that, not that i ever need anybody to share traumatic stories of childbirth to people who are pregnant but that don't i don't think that that helps <laughs> not what i am saying is that you have to take the time to heal you have to take the time to mentally check in with yourself after mm -hmm. that process. And you have to make sure your partner is a part of that process. Mm -hmm. So it cannot be you just making... But he can't be a part of it if he's not, if he's still struggling and dealing with lust. Exactly. And, and I can say that from experience. It was a lot more difficult for me to be a partner in her healing through her postpartum. Because I'm, you know, H. Right. <laughs> like, so you can't even hear so I can't that, even hear hey, that she, I'm not I can't hear that physical pain but I'm looking at myself and this is not the self that I have before. and the solution is not oh baby let me show you you're like you look good you look good yeah let me do it let me let me show you how no. good you look no. you're just age yeah like it has you it has nothing to do with you actually being present in the moment and I can I can share that and it but it helped me go through the process of figuring out then what really is the danger of M? Mm -hmm. What is the danger of M? What does the Bible say about M? Because he doesn't. Genesis is not what the Bible says about M. I, I know people like that, but that has nothing to do with M. M, and we're using M because we got baby ears for those who just came in here. Information, right? Um, M is it? It's a physical thing mm -hmm. that most certainly can reflect. A very internal problem that you have. Mm -hmm. People immediately call it in self gratification because that's where it lives. Mm -hmm. It lives, and what the Lord, the, how how I got delivered and free from it was God telling me. And there's practical steps, right? A thought will come in my head, and I get all hot, but don't entertain a thought. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you get sad, and today, you, if you have the power on any days, oh, I don't feel like being sad. You have the power to say, oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be H. You know what I'm saying? Like. Right. This thought of, ooh, I remember when, okay, if you can stop yourself from being sad, if you can stop yourself from being happy, if you can hold a grudge against somebody, you can stop yourself from being H. Yes, you can. You can stop yourself. And it starts with you not entertaining that thought, occupying right. your mind and your time with something else. Just really practical things. Or even in the process of me getting freed from, yeah, it's discipline. It's discipline, right? I, and, and in the word of discipline, I had to discipline myself oh, no, no, no. to... You're thinking about this? No. Because what would happen is, Down. let's say I did M, right, while she was recovering. And I would feel guilty, as everybody does, you know, after you, you know. You know. And, I, and I never, I think, to God be the glory, I never went back to, you know, after middle school. So even in this uh, relapse, I never went back to anything. I just started, you know, didn't need to. My mind is crazy, crazy. You know, thank God for, you know, deliverance. But... I had to discipline myself. Okay, you repented from intervening to that thought. That thought coming in your head, you already said no. And it would develop a strengthening like at night if that was a thought. Well, I already repented from that. I'm sorry, I have the Holy Ghost for real. So if I repent from something, I'm not doing that again. You know what I'm saying? The Bible says uh, he is born of a spirit, a uh, seed that doth not commit sin because it's, you know, seed remaining in him. So... I've already repented from that thought. That thought comes up. That's I'm not going to fall to that. But let's let a new thought come in and it'll overtake me. I have to rediscipline myself. And so then it got to beyond disciplining thoughts. Yes, yes. And now I have to discipline okay, urges. Okay. Right? Here. When you're hot and in heat, why not even why are you hot and in the heat? I'm hot and I'm in heat because I'm a man. You know what I mean? Like, and being real enough to say that, I'm hot and in heat because I'm a dude. Like, I'm a young dude. I'm in my prime. I got this beautiful woman in my house walking around here just beautiful as can be. Yeah, things, flames, you know, it's going to happen. But there's something internal with Julian as a man, sin, that has to be addressed. Why can't you filter that to something that is not carnal? Yeah. Right? Why can't you do that? You're so spiritual. You're so... Let's get into the econ, blah, 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 blah. let's slip into the spirit. Because there will be a place for us to join each other in that heat. Yeah. There's going to be, a, like, what? That's, you know, thank God for a beautiful wife and, and a beautiful man, I guess. You know, to God be glory, beautiful. <laughs> right? That, but that goes to what the scripture says about them. If they cannot contain, there, we have a mutual right. desire for one another. 
when he said your desire will be for your husband and your husband will be for your wife. That's how we know we want. We have a mutual desire for each other. So the problem of are we going to be, you know, letting the Lord use us in that realm of ministry? Yeah, God's going to use us in that realm of ministry because we have a mutual desire for each other that goes beyond us wanting each other physically. We have a desire for each other's souls that sex is easy for us because we desire each other's souls. And that's a whole nother conversation about, you know, all that and what have you. But what's interesting is having to discipline myself into, okay, you're H, but just because, and watch this, this is where God really gave me freedom and deliverance. Just because you're H doesn't mean you have to do it. Yeah. That's simple. That's simple deliverance. Because you're okay. Just because you're H. Just that because I'm angry doesn't mean I have to. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what it comes exactly. down to. What are you because doing in your, I, when you're bored? Exactly. What are you doing because when you're I bored? Because I think that those thoughts even come in, and not to say that they only come in when you are idle, when you have time that isn't occupied with something constructive. Yeah. But I'm saying that you can minimize those moments when you don't have idle time. When mm-hmm. you make sure you are doing what you're supposed to do. Because I think that that was something that I had to work on, too. That, you know, me, I, I think we were talking about this the other day, about how, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night, and everybody just <laughs> rested, you know? Everybody just rested. Like, I'm not going to wake him up. I said, it's okay. No, but listen. I said, you can wake me up. <laughs> yeah, and he's snoring and having the people. I'm not going to do that, because he's tired. We're both tired. But me right now, I wake up, well, a lot of times, because I'm pregnant so just like the baby's moving and everything but i wake up and that desire is there but you also have to think sometimes well did god wake me up was this an opportunity Mm. for him to speak to me and i'm not saying you got to be all deep either but i am saying that that might be an opportunity for something else to to happen and And there has been times where she has woken me up yeah and the lord has ministered but even in that is the leader i needed that before i went to work yeah Hello, somebody. Like, why are we not? I needed but, that. Thank you. Amen. No, sorry. <laughs> so, so it comes down to us being able to analyze and identify what our out of time is. Because I think that when, before we even had Aubrey, the mm-hmm. year that we had, was that was spent with a lot of that. Mm-hmm. And not to say that we weren't prayerful, not to say that we weren't reading. But I will say that there were potentials for those moments Mm -hmm. that we use for other things. And we figured that out later. I mean, we're we're just married. We've never been married before. We've never, you know. Right. But we were thinking about this after all. We were like, we used to have so much time. (laughs) And we were both working people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how do we have so much time after work, before work? Like, it was kind of crazy how much time it, it, it might have just felt like we had all the time, but you know, well, we could have did this. I could have learned how to bake then. I could have learned how to make fresh bread then, but it, it it's it's important for us to show other people that, you know, yeah. idle time is not just, should, shouldn't just be spent doing that, but even and even if it is spent in that, mm-hmm. make the intention to learn what your partner enjoys, mm-hmm. communicate during that time, because I think that becomes an issue later on, too. Yeah. Is that, well, I've been doing this this way forever. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't like it from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but even with well, that, just, cause even in the time that we did spend, there was a lot of communication. It uh-huh. wasn't just... And that's my point. That's my point, even with the M word, with Ernst and Randall. Right, exactly. Because it might be it might be <laughs> that you guys are intimate, and right. you're still M wording because you aren't getting the fulfillment that you Thank thought you, that Bria. you should get. Thank you, Bria. That's it. That's the key right there. That's the key. That you're still inwarding and you are being intimate with your mm-hmm. wife or husband because you're still not fulfilled. Yeah. And so, really, it does come back to not communicating right. and you having to deal with, is this a lust problem that I have? Yeah. Or is this a, I don't feel like it's intimate enough or right. what have you. Right. Right? Right. Because, and it goes to... Or are you looking for something different you, from what you had before the marriage? Not in terms of that, even that person, but somebody else. You, you've put, affixed this person in a position that they were not even equipped to be because, you know, y'all. There you did. There you go down. You're doing... Yeah. So-and-so before you got married was whom ba ba wop bamboo And that's what you're expecting. 
because your heart is not knit to that person. Yeah. Your your private parts are knit to that person. Right. <laughs> and your private parts are knit to an experience that's not godly. Right. And that's the key. You're knit to an experience that is before its time. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're, you want a, a certain action done because that's what little Miss Thing Thing at the picnic did to you. Instead of you, it's a moment of intimacy between you and the person. No, that was your, that, that's, you know what I'm saying? And that's where that communication, because now when you're communicating with your, with your wife or husband, you got to have that conversation with them. Well, that's because so-and-so, you know, back in the day, so-and-so. Now, dare you to have that conversation with your significant other about somebody who, you know, got you right back when. You're going to have to deal with the conversation of, well, do you still have feelings for that person? Do you still think about that person? All conversations we don't want to talk about, but you have to have. But those conversations get weeded out when you're actually loving the person's soul mm -hmm. rather than their, their boobs, butt, and other things. And that's real. I'm not just saying, like, that's real. Because we could trade stories, right? Yeah. We could trade stories of some of the things we've experienced yeah. and some of the high times we had in the flesh. Yeah. But it does not compare to what we feel for each other and beyond feel what is knit with each other in the spirit and in our souls. Yeah. Because we can make each other have a good time now. The Lord is the Lord is kind. But it, it's got to go more than that or else you end up ending. Right, and we use an M for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you. You end up ending because your your age. Yeah. And then you go into an intimate moment with your husband or wife, and it's like you're ending, right? And you can't even. Or you and you can't, can't differentiate. Right? Yeah, and you're not. Yeah, they're they're giving their all to you, and you sitting there hoping, begging, and pleading right. that somebody else would do it. <laughs> and but enter in adultery. Yep. Enter in cheating, mm -hmm. and and I and, and I somebody else cause the, the and I heard somebody say that to us before before we got married, and I understand it how people end up cheating when they get married. I understand it's because you never dealt you never dealt with lust, mm -hmm. you never dealt with the perversion, and your and your lens for s is this person, right. not intimacy. Right. There's a difference. Your lens for S is not intimacy. It's a person. It's an action. It's a self, yourself, gratification. Mm -hmm. You can do that with S. You in marriage, there are people in marriages right now that are, that are and, and, and the Lord gave it to me in three categories, and it clicked when we were doing our counseling, um, to God be the glory, with, the, with Apostle Owens. Great, 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 great counselor. <laughs> and... He told me that he gave me an exercise to reflect and I did it and I honestly went and reflected mm -hmm. and God revealed to me, yeah, Julian, you have the capability to make love, uh, do, do, I'm trying to find a good way to say it, like do it, like y'all, y'all, y'all doing it and then you also have the luxury to just have S and, and God broke it down to me in those three categories. You can make love to your wife. Y'all could be doing it, or you're just having S. And I was, Lord, Lord, deal with me with the just having S part. Because that's the part that shows up with masturbation. That's the part that shows up with, you understand, like, having thoughts about stepping out. It's because when you're just having S, it's about you. It's selfish. It's about you getting off. That's just S. When you're making love, that ain't just about you. That's an intimate moment between two people. When you're doing it and y'all, you know, laughing and having giggling and having a great time, again, that's a joint moment. But if you just, well, baby, they let me have some, baby, and it's just you, well, that, well, how do you think they end up cheating? Because they're so used to just having it their way. Why do you think they get given to information? It's because they're so content and used to doing it by themselves. Right. How do you think they end up so looking? So it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you're there or not. They have their hand. Right. And like, and we don't have this conversation, but we need to because it's right there in the word. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to offend, cut it off. Mm -hmm. The problem is you. The problem is you. You're the problem. You don't know how to be intimate. You know how to be age. Yeah. And that does not breed any kind of longevity in, relation, in intentional relationship with your spouse. 
Sure, y'all gonna be together, somebody's gonna be unhappy, somebody's gonna get taken advantage of, someone's not gonna be able to be consecrated when they need to because you're so busy. Uh, and watch this, here's, here's the check. Here's the check, and this is a practical exercise. If your spouse tells you, the Lord is calling me to a fast, which means I'm not gonna be able to do none of this, none of this, none of this for the, for the moment, and your initial response is, well, what about me when I'm H? You have a lust problem. You have a lust problem. I'm saying it again. If, 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 if Bria comes to me and she says, the Lord has called me on a fast. Mm -hmm. And my initial response is, okay, so does that mean we're not having sex? Right. You don't even try to know what I'm trying to get accomplished. Right? You have a problem. She just said that she's fitting to consecrate. Right. I need that to say, that's a, that's, I should be like, what would the Lord fit to do? Yeah. Well, bless God. What, what, so what are you consecrating for? You need one. We shouldn't even really have to have that conversation of, well, does that mean we're not having sex? But I think now it's going to come up. Yeah, it's going to come up. It's okay to have that conversation, but I think it should be from a lens of, let me prepare myself. Let me myself. prepare myself. Not, oh, man. Oh, dang. She about to not be thrown. Right. You know, it's like, because the, but, and, and again, it goes back to the top of the conversation. It puts yourself over consecration. Mm -hmm. It puts your flesh over the spirit. That's what it does, right? Be fruitful and multiply came after this is your woman. This is your husband. This is your wife. People, we grow, we, we don't study the scriptures right, so it makes sense. But precedent has a place in scripture. There's a reason why there is an order to what God says. This should be your husband. This should be your wife. And you should cling to your husband and wife. We ain't, we're not even talking about S yet. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about S until he says be fruitful and multiply. And people don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. That when we get to S, we started with fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Thank God there's pleasure in it. Thank God there's pleasure in it. But whenever you cater to the lust of the flesh, you're walking in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's Bible. That's, that's Bible. And if men and women alike would be honest about it, I was honest about it. I can testify about it. That was part of the hardest part of our second year of marriage was me, me I don't know what she had to go through. I do, but I ain't going to put her out there. I'm putting me out there. I had to go through a place where, sure, I'm not walking in fornication. Sure, I'm not walking in adultery. Sure, I'm not walking in wrath and variance. Oh, but concuspicence. Yeah, we don't know about that. We don't talk about that word. Lust. The things we don't want to, we, ain't nobody want to talk about that, right? Those were some of the things where I was like, now, am, am I operating in that, in that fruit of the spirit? And I'm, am I operating or giving way to perversion? Just like I disciplined myself by the Holy Ghost to stop cussing, to God be the glory in October, it'll be, I think, 11 years. I have to discipline myself to not get into my flesh. To say, oh, you're H. Well, that's not an excuse for me to go, mm, to be. You're H, but that's not an excuse for me to say, Bria, come here, let me do now, I might joke and play with her like that because, you know, just to let her know where I'm at, you know. Right. Because if, yeah, if I'm looking crazy, she knows, you know, okay, Jolena. Or that you tells know. them, you know, that's a nice thing to or, do. Or she might you know, feel good about oh, that. Oh, you like me. You like me. You look like a whale. No, you don't look like a whale. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, no. And so in my, it's encouraging and uplifting. Yeah. So that communication is for open right for the some right person. Yeah, some people some don't people like you know. Some people don't, don't like that. Right. But I know Bria. She she something like, hey girl, you look good. <laughs> like she liked that, right? But it also has to be sober too. Yeah. Because if she says, oh thank you, baby, I'm just not really not feeling it. I have to go okay. Yeah. And not why you ain't in 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 in. Because now we're now we're really at the root of your problem. And I don't think we're, people are not sober enough to, like, if you want your marriage to last long, you have to talk. And you have to be honest with yourself first, and then you got to be honest with each other. If you're not honest with yourself, you can come up with some, some lies and be lying to people in their face. And then you build that precedent of lying to people in their face. You know, and so there's, there's a lot of practical steps that I would definitely give for you know, inspiration. Like, I, I've, I've developed a whole bunch of practical steps to God be the glory. Because I've had to defeat that thing. Mm -hmm. I've had to overcome it. So I know how to get through it. There's no excuse. There's no, you know, but even so much as sex. There's so much practical things to do and to not do that's going to help you. There's just things we don't watch. We were, we were about to watch, first of all, and I got to say this. I got to release this and expose this by the Holy Ghost. That clickbait show, 
that y'all everybody's so into? Let me tell y'all something. The first minute and a half, somebody's instrument into pornography. How, how'd y'all get past that part? Because we gloss over it in our own lives. Y'all see that? And it, it shows a bit more stuff than that. All kind of things that are in these TV shows and movies that we just, oh, okay, we're going to keep watching it. But, but it's downright sin. I, I understand now why the, the saints of old, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful by saying old, Excuse but you. the saints of time before, why they was like not having people, allowing people to watch movies and certain stuff. I get it. Because certain things are like, no, it's off. And, and watch this. As a married man, I'm going to tell you, it puts it in your spirit. Game of Thrones put so much stuff in my spirit, I had to stop watching it. Because they was just going for it in Game of Thrones. They was going for it. And I love the show. But it got to a place where it's like, okay, I really can't watch this. I can't watch this. You know, and it's the discipline by the Holy Ghost to say, I, it's, that's not expedient for me. Now, somebody else might be able to watch it and, and then not do nothing. Okay, more power to you. But you sitting there and you're, and, but you got to be honest too. Because some of the stuff we saying, I, I can, I can, is because you don't know how it affects you. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You ain't done no in, introspective research to see that you really are affected by Game of Thrones. Or you really are affected by Scandal. Or you really are affected by clickbait. You just don't know it yet. Or you are ignoring it. For example... Scene come on, we sit and, and it was me. We were, we tried to watch it yesterday. It was me, my sister in love, Bria's Bri, sister, my sister. I call her, she's my sister. And the babies were sitting there. We weren't in there. We were outside. No, uh, it wasn't just me and Brittany. Bitly, yeah, uh huh. And we were sitting there, and me and sister are watching it. And not a minute and 30 seconds into it, they flip to a scene and, and the girl is the first episode. So y'all can't tell me. I didn't see that. Yes, you did. If you watch Clickbait, you saw it. I'm just challenging you now by the Holy Ghost. Now you're accountable. The, the girl is sitting there doing stuff to herself. Make it. We turned that off. And I really wanted to watch it. Everybody said it was a good show. But there's a standard. I can't let that in. I cannot afford for that to be in my spirit. And it's just that glimpse. I can't afford. You see how it's still in my mind and I have to process. That's where we turn it off. It is not. We have to be because then it shows up in my marriage. Then it shows up in my conversations. Then it shows up in my relationships. Then it shows up. In, it's not appropriate. What? And it's not appropriate. It's not. I can. I can. I can go on and on. And so we have to have these conversations. We have to talk about it. S by itself is not. It's not sin. What you do with it is. M by itself, and people are not going to like this, M by itself is not sin. It is most certainly, and it most certainly shows up as sin, how we do it. It is. You know, you don't really hear about people saying, you know, I, I am, I am because I just need a release, which is very possible. I can testify. That's very possible. You know, I share that, you know, we, we co-sleep with Aubrey. Is that what it's called, co-sleep? Yeah. Yeah. We co sleep with Aubrey. It would, I would be enraged if I woke up and had a situation at nighttime with my daughter in the bed. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm putting, I'm, I'm making it because we, we don't talk about this and we're not going to do taboo. The saints need to hear this. If I wake up in my bed and I done had a wet situation with my daughter in the bed, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. And I know it's natural because I'm a human and that's what the body giggity goo. I understand that. I understand that. But there is something I can do to mitigate it. Now, my responsibility as a man, as a born again, Holy Ghost filled, Econda Biondo, all that believer, is to find a way to mitigate it without also falling to temptation, which means I have to deal with lust. I have to deal with perversion. I have to deal with my implicit biases. I have to deal with the truth of M. I have to make sure it's not, you know, I'm not m because I'm H. Or, or m because I'm thinking about even my wife. Because now I'm projecting it on her and she might not be there today or tomorrow. And that's not fair. Again, goes into the intimacy of people's relationships. Well, she's not supposed to defraud me. Is she defrauding you or is she catering to your M, to your L, to your lust? We want to talk about that? Because that, that was a question that was asked. That was a question that we, we got asked, right? Didn't he, didn't he ask us that? Are, are you, it's my prayer time, my alarm just went off. That was a question what our counselor asked us. He said, well, are, do you feel defrauded or do you, 
Or are you looking for her to do something that she shouldn't be doing? You, right? Isn't that what he asked? Yeah. He said, I think the exercise y'all need to do is go back and actually check to see if you're being defrauded or if you're just looking for affection. And the truth was, she wasn't defrauding me. I was looking for affection, but I was also looking for self-gratification. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Because I'm H and she's not. But I want my fix. That's self-gratification. You might as well go watch pornography. We don't want to talk about that. But that's literally what it is. But we hide it under the guise of, well, she's doing her due diligence. No, 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 no. And we can go even to the scripture of what that word due benevolence means. Mm -hmm. We can go into that because it's a mutual thing. It's not your age, she's not, give it to him. Mm -hmm. That's not Bible. We're looking at the scriptures. It says they, they, they. This has to one accord, they, period, period, you know? And I think the worst part was I had agreed to it with her. So how are you going to agree to it and then be like, you know what? No, I'm H, so I need that right now. It goes back to the root. Bless you, baby. And then I understand, too, you agree. Oh, hold on, y'all. I'm trying to put it in my order. Me, too. <laughs> You, ag yes, you agree to it, too. You guys agree to, to have that time period. When you guys agree to have children, mm -hmm. you guys agree to fast. When you go, or one of somebody's fasting, you might fast with somebody else. Like I'm about to fast with my sister, um, probably later on this week. But, you know, you agree to it then. So I think, again, it comes back to communication because... Sometimes people need those details. Yeah. People may not be able to just um, no go, I don't know what happened. Go with what go with what you're saying without all of the so tomorrow that means from this time to this. <laughs> you know, some people need that. Yeah. And, and, that's I, think, fair. and I think that, that may be something, you know, that men might need more than women be most like in life, right? Because it's like if I say to Julian, you know, can you put the food in the fridge? Contingent upon what it is that he's putting in the fridge, that pot might be in the fridge. <laughs> but in my mind, me saying, can you put the food in the fridge? It's taking it out of the pot. Putting in the Tupperware. Tupperware that matches, not with plastic wrap on the top. Put it in the refrigerator, not in a random place, but on a shelf where leftovers belong. How am I supposed to know all that? You see that? <laughs> and then you could come on to sleep. But I, I think sometimes that that's missed. You know, sometimes we have to be a little bit more detailed. I shouldn't have to explain myself. Well, no, I think that that's a um, assumption too. As women, sometimes yeah. we have that. Well, you don't have to, but I think that for your for your mental state and for you guys to actually not have an argument about something mundane is to have explain yourself. And Why not explain crazy. yourself now instead of having to explain yourself after the fact when you already feel vulnerable and you're violent blown up. or whatever? Yeah. Uh, also, there should be a treat each other with the king and queen respect. There are things you don't ask a queen to do. See, now, Period. <laughs> that's a conversation that people don't want to have. <laughs> what? Never mind. No, we won't have that conversation, so, too. <laughs> with that being said, um, I think that that comes with a level of maturity that is not there when mm -hmm. some people get married. Because mm -hmm. the understanding at times, because I've seen it, is not a king and queen mentality. It's a king and servant mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or what's it called? Handmade. Handmade. Uh, and it's not a... Concubine. And it's not mentality. a reverence. So It's not a reverence. It's a, once again, gratification. Mm -hmm. It's not a reverence. You're not reverence. You don't reverence... I can't even shut up about it. You can't reverence somebody. Excuse me, Jelly. <sighs> Y'all know where I'm going with this? You you trying to um you know there's certain things you just don't ask a queen to do. Right? And it certainly does bring perversion in the marriage. What I look like bringing somebody else into our bedroom. Period. Y'all you just bring her there to get shot. Bria said, I'm just bringing her in there to get shot. Facts. <laughs> but like, well, I have this I have this fantasy of the, the heart of every man is wicked. Didn't he tell us to get away from every wicked imagination? Yes. That's a wicked imagination. That, 
well, I just could, I just could see myself, and of course, you my number one, so you gonna be on top, and 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 this person gonna be down there uh, playing with my toes, and I'm y'all, y'all understand what I mean? I'm saying toes for the sake of the ears, but y'all know what I'm talking about. That is a wicked fantasy, fantasy nonetheless, but it's wicked. It's wicked. Well, what if we agree to it in our bedroom? You both are in trouble because it's a wicked imagination. It's wicked. You call it what you want to call it. The bed is undefiled in marriage. That's not what it means. And we, where's the scripture? So maybe we need to go to that scripture. Because that's not what he's talking about. Because if that's the case, then you can bring, then you can have a man who is an actual homo uh homo uh Y'all know what I mean. Homo, uh, homo, uh, uh, bring another man into the relationship. And he's doing things that are abominable according to the scriptures. But he has the wife in the bed too. So the bed's undefiled in marriage. You see how that twists the script? You see how that contradicts each other? That don't even make any sense. Because Romans chapter 1 says that they're going to be given up to their lust for each other. But you, but you say it's okay because the bed is undefiled in marriage. That's what you're saying. That's not Bible. Stop twisting the scriptures. Line upon line, precept upon precept. You got to do line upon line, precept upon precept. There's some things that when you mature, you will not ask your wife or husband to do. Right? Thank you. It means it's legal, right? That's what it means. That you have, hey, hey. One, two, three. Yay. And mommy's got something else that's going to make us feel better. All right. What it's talking about is that, that you can have sex when you're married. Now, it's not talking about you having all kinds of things. And, and you know what? And it disrespects your wife's body. Or it disrespects, it really does disrespect your husband's body. There are things that are just disrespectful to your husband and your wife. There's certain things that are disrespectful to your husband. And we've been saying it. Saints of old been saying it. And people just, people just crazy. I don't, you know, people just don't like it. But there's certain things that when you mature, you recognize is not respectful. Then there's other things that you recognize is very respectful and expedient. <laughs> if you are going to have a successful, intimate encounter that you can't just run to the races and shoot. That was good, right? Yeah. Thank you. You can't just run in there. You're going to have to make, make, a, make a, you're going to have to make an appointment. You have to make an appointment. You got to make an appointment. That's the best way to take your time. Take your time. I'm, we're trying to say this very, we're trying to say this. You got to make an appointment. You got to take your time. You got to talk a little bit. You got to communicate a little bit. You got you to gotta do things that are appropriate. Praise him. I just looked at my daughter. She's looking at me in my face. Praise him. Right? You, you, you can't, you know. And, and, and if we were to, as believers, have this conversation, honestly, people would not be doing some crazy stuff. And it would cause perversion to not enter or to exit marriages. Right. But nobody wants to share, but that's my bedroom. And you might need help in your bedroom. Because you're calling me into your marriage, so you need help in your marriage. Can I, give you, can I give you some godly wisdom, some divine wisdom? Stop doing that in the bedroom. Stop, just stop. Stop calling her that in the bedroom. Uh-oh. <laughs> right. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. I know you might be huffing and puffing, and you just slip out. But you got to get a new language, because she doesn't appreciate that. People don't like that. Now, 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 getting and quiet. She does like it. You, you talking it's to? A bigger, it's, yeah, a bigger it's a bigger There's problem. There's something That's deeper. Something else. That's okay. something else. If she's receptive of that type of words to her body and her temple, that's a whole other problem. Because the Bible said, the Bible said, let no filthy communication come out of your mouth, mm-hmm. but exactly. only that that builds up to edifying. Colossians three chapter eight verse eight talks about that. Where I should never call her out of her name. Right. Whether we're in a, oh God, I thank you moment. Or whether we're in regular conversation or angry right. or upset exactly. with each other. She should never be called out of her name. Never. And she should never receive anything that's not her name. Mm-hmm. Now, beauty is her name according to a virtuous woman, Proverbs chapter 31. Amen. Right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a part of who she is. Beauty is who she is. Queen is who she is. Her works praise her in the gates. So I can call her all of that. But you call her the B word when y'all intimate? Yeah, it's contradicting. You, you got, 
that y'all have y'all have some real things y'all need to stop because it's going to unfold into more unrighteousness, even yeah, as the scripture says. The word over the pulpit. Now you're saying the B word over the pulpit. Lord help. Y'all could how did they end up there? Because in the bedroom they saying it. Nothing done in the dark. We'll Lights just, out. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's gonna be hit. You saying it in the bedroom. And then you looking crazy in the face at your wife over there and she's like you can't believe you said that across the pulpit. Yes, you can. Because you love saying it. You're saying it all this stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, we just had the conversation with for y'all. But, you know, ask y'all questions. You know, and, it, and it's not that we have all the answers, but we have the word. <laughs> we got, we got the word. The, the start of it all is us being willing to have a conversation about it. Because I think that, that that's a lot of where things are missed. Mm -hmm. Things are taken into their own, and and you end up you end up doing things and operating in ways that you shouldn't. So, you know, that's that on that. But we got to go. Yeah, Aubrey is sleepy. Her eyes are starting. Yeah, you in the car? You sleepy, baby? Um, if all hearts and minds are clear, <laughs> y'all seriously though, lock into the lock into. Heaven. And if y'all need somebody to talk to, we got y'all. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it because it needs to. If you're if you're going into marriage, if you're in a marriage and you need godly counsel, I mean this is why we're here. It's part of our it's part of our call, you know. We're called to do this. This is this is a gifting that we have in our lives. From the hours of nine to five. Yeah, from the hours of nine to five. Now like don't my office or hours leave a voice nine. Or leave a voicemail. Leave a voicemail. And if it's an emergency, like you're in a domestic situation, yeah. then the call Holy the Ghost, cops. you know, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you, call the now. cops. You're going to get free. You're going to get free. Tell us about that. And call after the cops. the cops free you, we're going to talk and we're going to make sure we're there for you and help you. But nobody has to be in an unhealthy relationship. Nobody has to be in bondage. Nobody has to be in a false pretense of holiness and a false pretense of submission. No. If God doesn't rape us, and if God doesn't take advantage of us, and the husbands are supposed to love their wives as the church, well, why do we do that? God doesn't force us into intimate moments. Right. He doesn't. He saw, if you draw nigh to me, I draw nigh to you. Dad. And we're supposed to love our wives as, as Christ loves the church. And wives, they, he makes himself available. To and he, so, so that, take that with what you will, but, you know, check in with yourself. Yeah. And say, well, why can't I? Why won't I? Why don't I want to? Mm -hmm. And and it's okay to think that. It's okay. It's okay. It doesn't yeah, mean it you don't love somebody. It means that, okay, well, I have to make sure that what I'm doing is actually glorifying God and that I'm. it's a joy in it. Mm -hmm. Living for Christ is a joy. It is. As I much it. As much hardship happens, as much trials and tribulations happen, it's a joy. So, in everything, we have to see the joy in it. So. So, yeah. Peace, y'all. We love y'all. Peace be unto you. Happy Feast of Trumpets in a couple of hours.